Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Mondays with Meg. This morning, we are going to be talking about building community, and I have the most special guest on with us that I just cannot wait for you all to meet because she's pretty amazing, okay? So this is my dear friend, Brittany. Say hello, Brittany. <laughs> Brittany is the brilliant businesswoman behind Rudy's Flower Truck. And I, I will tell you, I wish you all could come to St. Louis and just have me like show you around our beautiful city. And, um, and I know that if we go anywhere on any given weekend together, you will run into Rudy's Flower Truck because she literally sets up her most adorable vintage flower truck like all over town every weekend through social media she lets us know where she is so and she builds community through this and i can't wait to talk to her about this but i do want to let you know so she has a website i'm going to be putting that link on here she um not only does she have her amazing most adorable flower truck that is so insta fabulous like you have to take a picture with it it's so cute and not only that but so basically you know you build bouquets at her flower truck you can go online to her website and you can set up regular flower deliveries for yourself on mondays she travels around st louis delivering flower bouquets to people or you can do that for a friend like I did for my my Amy that you met a couple of weeks ago. I ordered for her birthday. I scheduled two bouquet deliveries with Brittany and um, she made that so special, you guys. It was so great. So anyway, without any further ado, here is my dear friend, Brittany. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I, we're nervous. Good. <laughs> It's all, we're all friends, right, guys? She has no reason to be nervous, right? Give me some hearts. Let me know. She is, let her feel the love that she has no reason to be nervous. Um, but so, okay, so I'm really excited for our conversation today all about building community. And I think um, first, before we get into that, I just kind of wanted to ask you a little question I have, Brittany, um, all about why did you, when and why did you start Rudy's Flower Truck? Give us a little backstory. Okay, so last year, um, so like a year and a half ago, um, I was looking for a different job and um, there was this ad that came up from entrepreneur.com and it was mobile businesses um, outside of a food truck. And so on there was this woman that was doing um, a flower truck or like a floral business out of like one of those big trucks that you would see a food truck out of. Yeah. Like, oh, that's really cool. And that just kind of like sparked my interest in wanting to work with flowers. Um, and so I did, I'm very impatient. So I only like researched like for a week, if I could find a job in St. Louis that would let me work with flowers and I couldn't. And so then I was like, okay, I'm going to look into this flower truck thing. Um, and I was able to come up with something that I didn't have to have floral experience to do, but I could yeah. sell flowers. Um, and that also would be able to bring like some positive energy to St. Louis um, mm. I'm a really big advocate for St. Louis. I think yeah. that in order for us to give ourselves a better name, but then also to like attract tourists and then families to live here, we have to be able to provide them with things that, um, that just let them have fun and like enjoy their life. And so, you know, there's a lot of cool things popping up in St. Louis right now. We have mm. tons of like food options, tons of coffee shops, oh, yeah. rooms, things like that. I mean, we have the arch, so like, you yeah. know, it's better than that. Um, and so I wanted Rudy's to be a part of that. And that's yeah. all those things together is where that came from. That is beautiful. I love it. Well, I will never forget the first time I ran into Rudy's Flower Truck. It was at Katie's Pizza yeah. and Pasta. And, and I was like, where has this been my whole life? This is adorable. And that was our and first then I, launching. Yes. Are you serious? Yes. I didn't even know that. Anyway, um, and then, um, so like my my daughter-in-law, Chelsea, who I think is on this morning, so let's say hi to Chelsea. She's, uh, she's a little obsessed with your flower truck. She loves it. And so she she saw my post and she was like, what is that? And make sure I see yeah. that the next time we're in St. Louis. And I got to tell you, I was super excited then when I got to meet you um, at the last St. Louis Women's Creative uh, oh. Networking 
event. That was, I think, our first time really meeting yes. and having a conversation face to face. Yes. And um, and we just so everyone knows, we have a, a second one coming up this week on Thursday. Are you going to be there, Brittany? I'm going to try um, as long oh, as I, I hope so. my. I think we're going to Urban Chestnut, right? Yeah. Like yeah, in the Grove. So I might be bringing my youngest daughter with me, but then we'll be there. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm hosting the event. It is going to be so much fun. So if you're in the St. Louis area, if you have a creative business or just love to buy things from them like I do, um, stop by. You're going to meet some amazing business, creative business women in St. Louis, Urban Chestnut, 7 to 9 p.m. this Thursday. I'll put the link on this video. It is going to be so fun. Anyway, segue, right? Um, okay, so <laughs> that's it's when I first like, met It's Brittany. like a good way to like meet people. Like that's how you make friends okay. like by doing yeah. things like this, you know? Yes. Well, yeah. and, you know, speaking of building community, it's easy to feel like you're like on an island, especially if you do run your own business and like, you know, it's, it, if you're so busy in it to win it every single yeah. day, you know, building your business, it's hard to make that time to network and um, and build that community even for yourself with other peers and other strong business women. So I really encourage you to join us guys if you and don't I, have any plans Thursday night. And I think that like women who are doing creative businesses or even men who are doing creative businesses, yeah. a lot of people do them like by themselves or maybe like with yeah. one or two other people. And like, we mm. need, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need for sure. interaction. It's like, this is a good way to get that. Yeah, or just, you know, go on Facebook Live with me or something. Um, so <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so my first question that I have for you this morning, or maybe the second question, I don't know, that I have for you this morning is really what community means to you, what like building community means to you, not only like personally, but also professionally. What does that mean to you? So this is like, honestly, once you asked me this question, I was like, this is kind of difficult to think about yeah. um, because I think community is so big and it's, and it's different um, in different ways. So like you yeah. community, there's like different communities, right? So like I have a professional community, like a business community with other business owners that I partner up with that I've become friends with now through that community. Um, but then I also have like community is like where I live, you know, yeah. and like, my geographical location um, or like community around like other parents that like maybe our children are friends and things like that. So community to me is really just like connecting with people. We have something yeah. common. Maybe we have like a common goal or common interest. Um, but there's like this responsibility to take care of that community and to foster it and look out for people yes. in the community. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Oh, that is such a good point. Um, and why do you think that's important? Those last couple points that you made, why do you think that's important just as humans as a whole for your personally or for your business? Why is that important? So I think and this is just my perspective, just my opinion. But yeah. I think in America, we have like this, we're by ourselves, like just do you, don't get anybody's business, but people need help and people need support and they need guidance. And um, if we want our communities to be safe for ourselves, but for our children and for other people in it, then it's our responsibility, I think, to help those who need help or just like connect with people, be there for them. Um, and I'm sure like all of you guys who are on this can remember a time when you needed somebody, you know, and somebody yeah. was there for you. So, um, yeah, I'm really big into like going out of your comfort zone and like connecting mm. with people who you normally wouldn't. Oh, yes, so my people, yes, yes, because then like that person gets to see a different perspective, and then you also get to take something away from that too. And for me, that's how you're fostering community is like connecting with people that only that you have something in common with but maybe people that you didn't think you had something in common with and then once yeah. you get to know them you do and so it's really just like sharing love and um positive yeah. experience i think yeah and you know i feel like that's no matter where you are you don't have to be in a big melting pot city yeah. like st louis 
right. to make that happen. You can be in the suburbs, you can be on an island, you can be in the desert. Um, now, I will say, you know, like we just moved back here from from Arizona and it literally it was a desert season for me. Um, and, you know, fostering authentic community is definitely like a core value of mine. And it was difficult for me there, but I did find it. But I had to be super intentional about that. And literally it changed everything about the experience for me and my family while we were there. Um, but so kind of with that in mind, um, what have you found to be some of the biggest challenges with building community, whether that's personally or with your business? Hmm. The biggest challenge, I don't know. So I think the biggest thing is understanding that you can still can like I can connect with people even if we have different backgrounds. Yeah. Um, sometimes people aren't always willing to like open up and then you just kind of have to either take time with them and be patient with them and allowing them yeah. to open up with you yeah. or realizing that this might not be like a good fit if that makes sure. sense. Um, yeah, and you know, I mean, I've found that you know, really it's building that relationship. And so knowing like it can take time and being patient with that because as you build relationships with people, as you stick with it, you know, it you know, then that can open those, you know, those bridges and and different things that um it, you know, cuz you never know the type of hurts or a hangups or anything that the person might be dealing with, you know, before you came along. Right. And I guess like if you're gonna like it just depends on what kind of situation it is. Like yeah, for sure. Like, wanting to invest in this relationship and then yeah. it's something that's really worth it that's gonna pay off in the end because of either who that person is or what they can bring to your life or what you can bring to their life, um, then maybe it's yeah, then you need to have patience. And give for it. sure. <laughs> well, I think that's a good segue to a question that was asked ahead of time. My my dear sweet friend Teresa, hey T, I see that you're on here with us right now. Um, I think this is a good segue into your question. We all call her Mama T. So um, here's Mama T's question. She says, "I have a situation. My husband and I have moved to an island. Like literally, they did. They moved to an island." Um, and they desire to foster community with the residents, workers, and vacationers. They vacation there for over 25 years, but now they're actually, you know, the new homeowners on the island and living there full time. Um, her, she has several questions. Um, one was, how do they get involved? Another one was, how do they add value to their new community? Another one is, how do we become trusted and valued members of our community? And how fast is too fast? To make changes to the status quo so i realize this is like huge right this is right. a huge question but maybe we could start just start the conversation i know Teresa's on with us so um Brittany, i would love it if you could maybe give her some of your insight into this well i think the first question that she asked is like how can she get involved and i would just be mm -hmm. curious like what i have no clue what it's like to live on an island like i don't know um, <laughs> i can imagine it's isolating Right. So I'm sure it's yeah, totally different than like, and beautiful. right. <laughs> um, but like what kind of things are happening there? Like, are there community groups? Are there activities that are going like going on? Um, I know where we live at, there's like a, a neighborhood an association, um, unofficial, I should say, because we're not fancy, but, um, <laughs> but like, they do kind of like these uh, block party get together things like twice a year. And it's just really just to pull people out of their houses um, and get together. Cause our subdivision is pretty big. Yeah. Um, so are there things like that, like community activities that are happening or events? Um, are there groups that you could, you know, join? Like for me, that was probably the most helpful thing when I first started Rudy's was um, there's this, this group in St. Louis, it's called Rising Tide, and they bring together like creative business owners. Um, so they have a national chapter and then they have different um, like local chapters. And so that's where I met one of my best friends is just through doing that. And it was natural, it was authentic. Like she's the only friend that I walked away with from that group. Um, 
but just like, what are you passionate about? What do you like to do? And then trying to find ways to find other people that are doing that, whether that's like through groups or maybe other friends. Yeah, she made some comments here. She said um, she is serving the fire department as a note taker for their meetings. She takes food to them every month. Um, mm -hmm. And then her husband was actually just recently accepted to the Civic Association there, and um, and they both serve their um, their island chapel there. So it sounds like they are getting involved. One thing I kind of heard from what you said there, Brittany, that I think is a good point is like, so if those organizations, if you can't find those, or at least the ones that you might be interested in, maybe start it. Oh, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I mean, I, I yeah, she says there are only like thirty permanent residents on the island yeah <laughs> like your like pool of people is tiny it's the most beautiful place you guys i vacate craig and i vacationed with them there okay. once before they moved there full time it is heaven on earth um there are lots of people though that work on the island that um you know that are there and everything so it's really i think like a unique situation but not really because if we think about it on our on like my given street that's probably as many people that are on my street that right. I could invest in. You know what I mean? Or, you know, at my job or um, right. in any other spheres that I have, that's probably your, your, um, your rising tide local chapter is probably, um, you know what I mean? Like, I think it is similar. The one thing though that's different is that like, that's super small. Like we can that's sit here and talk it has like 30 there people. There are a lot of animals too though. There are turtles and um narwhals. No, I don't maybe not narwhals. <laughs> there you go. Those, those could be your friends. Um no judgment for sure coming from that. uh but yeah like I just manatees. Think, Manatee was what I was looking okay. for. That's it. Okay. Those are aren't those dangerous? Sorry. I think they're yeah, they're beautiful. Um yeah. So uh, yeah you're gonna have to be a leader then yeah. if, if it's really what you want to do and like that's kind of intimidating i think you know yeah when yeah. and teresa just said the animals don't talk much um right. you know what i think needs to happen is we all just need to go um stay at her house and <laughs> and just you know really help her build yeah. this community <laughs> we will help you i will take one for the team t <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um yeah so my actually my friend jason just made this awesome comment that i'm gonna put up on here he said he just read um a friend's blog where he shared his family motto jump and find your wings on the way down and he said i love that idea of assured success and one which seems to fit in with this discussion of community thank you for sharing that jason that was so so good. I, I love that you're on these with us. So good. Yeah. So I've been listening to yeah. like this business startup podcast and something um, that one of the facilitators talks about is exactly what Jason just said is like, yeah. it's the same with anything in your life, whether that's starting a business or finding right. friendships and things like that. Like you just, you jump off the cliff and then you build a plane on the way down yeah. and you just For figure sure. it out. Um I yeah. just think that we could be there though to like really, you know, kind of assess the situation more and kind of yeah. see what could work. Yeah. You know, that's that her heart is she's like, come on over, you know, um, definitely. Um, so uh, Teresa, I hope that was helpful. I would love to continue this conversation with you too, because you just, you know, I love you so much. Um, and so my next my next question I have for you, Brittany, is specifically how flowers build community for for St. Louis, or what is your take on that? I know you have a new T-shirt out and a new like campaign kind of going that I'm just obsessed with. So yeah. I'd love it if you could talk about that for a minute. So there, those are two different things. I, I know. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I will start in how I think flowers build community. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people that stop by the truck right now are coming to buy flowers for other people. Yeah. Okay. And so like, I love that. Yes. And like giving flowers used to be like the thing to do, right? Like if someone passed away, if someone was sick, 
going through a difficult time, had a baby, moved, you could send them flowers. Um, it's just like a nice gesture. It's not super expensive, um, something that makes people feel good. And so I think that kind of went away for a while. Yeah. And what my personal mission is, at least through Rudy's, is to make flowers like a part of our everyday life and spreading mm-hmm. joy with them. Um, and so a couple of things. So people are giving flowers. They're coming by the truck, building bouquets, giving them away. We have a lot of deliveries that happen, like for yourself, yeah. where you sent flowers to Amy for her birthday. Um, and so really like these, the act of giving and receiving flowers is really just connecting people together. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's really great. And then also our truck is just so unique that we have a lot, like every single weekend we have people that are just coming up and they're meeting strangers and they're connecting through like building bouquet yeah. at the truck or like, Oh, I like this. Or like, what part of the city are you from? And, um, Oh, I love it. You not anywhere else. Yeah. Like, I've never seen that happen in a coffee shop. I've never seen that happen. Like at a restaurant before where like people just have like these yeah. organic, conversations but that's happening at the truck and I just think it's the experience that we set up for people mm-hmm. and so it, that's really neat and super amazing to be a part of oh I love that so much that is it makes me want to just hang out with you on the weekend and just like, come over. like I yeah, get yeah. Yeah. Like, sometimes like we have like a lull like an hour and like I'm just like twiddling my thumbs you know so oh, I have to bring you coffee and we have to chat friend. about the flowers yeah. bring me- <laughs> Yes, bring you coffee. I love it. Okay. Well, I am, you know me. I'm so about that. I love it. Any way to help foster that just organic community building. Oh, it so speaks to my heart. I love that so much. And I've seen it happen when I've been at your flower truck. And so I love that. I love that it happens often. I love that. Um, Oh, and Teresa actually was saying she has the conversations at the community pool. I love it. There you go. Hey, yeah. what? I mean, pools are happy. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Teresa, <laughs> you're great because people like I, people see, I don't know, like get scared to talk like in public places. Yeah. So yeah. Like, I think you're going to be just fine on your island, Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to go. Field trip. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so tell me about your new t-shirt. Tell okay, me about so I will show you because on. let's see here. So this Yay, is t-shirt. I need one. Oh my gosh. I can see it. Build bouquets, not walls. Um, so yeah, when I was designing merchandise for Rudy's, I knew that I wanted us to have merchandise that wasn't just like Rudy's in your face. Yeah. You know, I wanted to be... Um, I don't know, like something that you can take with and wear it in different ways. Uh, it's not just like, oh, I'm repping a company. And I wanted, everything I do has to have meaning in it. It's probably like a character flaw of mine. Like I'm always like, this has to mean something. Yeah. Um, but anyway, there was a shirt that was circulating around and you've probably heard of it. Um, it's called Pick Flowers, Not Fights. Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, oh, that's a really cool idea. Well, then this idea of like, what can I do? Like, what kind of saying can I put on my shirt? And then, um, oh, my friend Caitlin's on. Yeah, she wants, she can't wait to get her shirt. I yeah. want to second that. I can't wait. Caitlin to get her is shirt. the reason why Rudy's is even existing right now. So Yay, we love you, Caitlin. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was just thinking one day it popped into my head, like build bouquets. That's what we do at Rudy's. And that's what we're always saying is like, okay, come by, build a bouquet. And then, of course, I think we all know about um, something that has been said often is let's build up walls um, on the U.S.-Mexican border. And so um, immigration is something that's super passionate of mine. And so I think that those two things married together is what created the shirt. Mm -hmm. Now, people can take it as what they want to take it at. You can take it literally as um, this is a political statement, or you can take it as let's not build walls um, with people. Right, like with relationships, yeah, yeah for sure, walls and things like that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I hope that explains it. That was amazing. And people are asking me, Where do I get shirts? And of course, your lovely Caitlin put yes. the link 
You're so good. I will be also putting the link on this video. But yeah. yes, you can buy them in person at Rudy's if you ever are in St. Louis and stop oh. by her truck. Oh, or you shipping. can also get it on the website. What yeah. was that? Yeah, I so said we're shipping. We do free shipping on t-shirts. Yeah. And then another thing that I wanted to um, say, like if you're, my goal with these t-shirts is really to get them out um, across the country. I just had a woman who came up from Austin, Texas, and she was vis visiting St. Louis with her parents. And she stopped by the truck and bought one of these shirts. She said she loved it. Um, so I think that this message really speaks to a lot of people yeah. not just here in St. Louis, but um, across the country. And so yeah. um, one thing that we are doing with these t-shirts, so is we um, are donating a portion of every single sale to another organization. It's called uh, Together Rising. And if anybody mm -hmm. heard of like Elizabeth Gilbert or Glennon Doyle, um, they're pretty yeah. big in this organization. And they have different projects that they do um, and just like helping people out. And one of their projects that they're working on is uh, providing legal assistance for migrant families who have been separated. Um, and so that's that's a project that we're going to be donating to. Great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So I will be putting that link up on here for any of you all over the country um, so you can get your shirt. I can't wait to get mine. Maybe you can bring mine Thursday. I'll pay you for it. Yeah. Um, and um, OK, so we're almost out of time. So I, wa I thought it would be good for us to end this today, really talking about a way or some ways that um, all of us could could leave this conversation today and actually start walking out, taking some intentional action to building community right where we are in our own spheres. Yes. And I'm trying to look at my notes because I made notes. Yeah, you're fine. Go ahead, girl. Uh, we yeah. don't know. <laughs> well, you do now because my face is not looking. Well, yeah, you, and you said, but other than that. Um, okay. So something super, super easy or something that I do at least, is just say hi to people. Yes. How about like, that? Right. That's so weird. <laughs> say hi. Um, and say hi to people that you maybe don't think you should be saying hi to. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. So I could give you an example. Um, there's a – so at the last um, happy hour that we did together where you and I had yeah. met, which was down like in the Grove, which is a pretty nice area yeah. in St. Louis. Um, yeah. I was standing outside talking to one of the organ uh, the organizers of that. And a woman came by and she was like panhandling, mm -hmm. not like asking for money. And at, and she had a small child with her, like a baby who was the same age mm -hmm. as my youngest daughter. And she just looked a little distraught. And so um, I didn't say anything to her then. And pretty much every, every single person that came into contact with her, which was about like 10 people where we were standing, just ignored her. Yeah. After we left, I couldn't stop thinking about her. And I remembered that she had said that she lived in that area. And so I just like drove my car around and I found her and I went up to her and I said, hi, I try to get a little bit more information about her situation. I gave her my phone number, told her that she needed anything. She could call me. And a week later she called me and wow. now, I've been helping her name's Pat um, for, I guess, like four months now. And mm -hmm. we are not similar at all. We come from totally different backgrounds. Our lives are very, like very different. We're at very different points in our lives. Yeah. But um, that to me is the best example I can give to you of building community. I love it. Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you guys. Um, so I'm a huge proponent for this. Um, just, just talking to people. I mean, I don't go anywhere without like learning everything I can about you, whether it's, whether you're my server at a restaurant or whether you're, you know, just sitting next to me at a coffee shop, whatever. I mean, really just stopping and taking a second to just right. say hello or give a hug or say you like their shirt or anything that you can think of. But I think what you mentioned is so important. You got a prompting and it was up to you what you did with that. Yes. Yes. And I, I could have just that left is key. like, oh, it's not my, yeah. it's not my problem. Yeah. Right. But yeah, like I said, that's how I, we change the world. It is. And it just takes, you know, we have to look out for each other. That's like the biggest right. thing is like, if we don't look out for each other, who is? Yep. 
It's that simple. Oh my gosh, I this has been so fun starting my That's week. With Can you just be here every week? Is that fine? I mean, whatever flower I delivery. I told you I'm moving in your house. Remember? Oh, that's you. right. Well, yeah, we're coming. We're moving in. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Can't wait. <laughs> I hope you like big deaf dogs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> did you meet Solis when you were here? I don't remember. I did. Oh, okay. I don't know where he okay. was. He was in the basement. Oh yeah, in his in his crate. Yeah, he's. He's a charmer, that one. Um, well, so we want to hear what you do this week, guys. We're going to hold you accountable to this. Um, go ahead and start liking Rudy's Flower Truck on Instagram and all the places, all the social media. Um, come back on to this video link and even tell us what one thing you do this week differently to start building community right where you are. We want to hear about it. Send me an email. Send me a message. Send Brittany an email or a message whatever we want to hear about it and we're going to do it too guys we're going to be even more intentional than we normally are with this and um thank you for joining us thank you Brittany, for being with us this morning i would love to have you on again you are a darling darling lovely lovely lady i love it thank you are you still nervous i think i'm good now okay good Perfect. we're 30 minutes into this now so yeah i'm good well, everyone, have a fabulous week. This is your focus, guys. We're just going to focus on building some community. No big deal. So have a great week. Love you so much. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.